present my screen. <coughs> Lab seven, sorry. Okay, lab seven. Anyway, uh, today's Q. Right. So again, we we shall start. But this this is very easy, yeah, because we are we are using Q, right? So Q is basically the Q that uh we have been knowing, yeah. It's just first in, first out. Who go in first, then uh, he will has a priority to go out first. So if last time I said that uh, step you can implement in both where right? you can implement in array, you can implement in linked list. But for the queue, because we already know that there will be a lot of shifting in both if we are using an array, right? Every time when an item go in, when they want to go out first, you need to do a lot of shifting. So it might be a little bit less suitable if we want to implement it in air. Next, every time you want to do any removal, uh, yeah, something like that. So uh, for Q, I recommend to use a linked list. So it's basically a simplified version of linked list, or it is a less feature linked list. Like for example, at linked list, you can uh, find where is your items, the items needed, the index of the items needed. Let's say I want to access to tick, I want to know where is it. Yeah, for linked list, you can use dot get. But for the queue, usually we will not have the information uh, for items in the middle. Yeah. Same like the stack, we can only either see the first item, yeah, or add new items or remove the uh, oldest item. Yeah, these are only the three features, or we can check if the queue is empty, definitely. Other than that, uh, it lacks of the feature provided by linked list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go with lab seven, question one. I always thought that today is lab six, no man. Uh, is it lab six or lab seven? Should be lab six. Okay, so question one, uh, implement a queue that put the transaction into a queue. Okay. Transaction is, uh, it means the transaction for bank. Uh, yeah. Simply say, there are two states for the transaction. One is deposit, another one is withdrawal. Okay, so uh, uh, you have a queue, then you will process according to the queue and print out every time you do the transaction. Yeah, initial balance, you have 500. So you can deposit whatever you want. But for the withdrawal, if you want to withdraw the money that's more than your balance, definitely you will display an error or you will make the transaction fail, right? So for uh, for better practice in coding, yeah, I would recommend that you try to relate everything uh, based on the real life situation, right? So we shall see uh, what are the class that I I made for this uh, this question, right? First we have account. Account is uh, simply said account uh, with only the balance. Then a two string, it will uh, return a string of balance. So this is for printing, right? Another thing, another class I have is the transaction. Okay, I'll make it larger a little bit. Okay. So now the transaction class, we have three variables. The first one is the success to indicate the state of transaction. Whether a transaction uh, fail or success, yeah, you can try to access to this flag. Yeah, if it's success, then it's success. Huh? Then the value is the uh, amount of transaction. The type is the type of transaction, where in this case, I'm using an enum. So enum simply said is a constant, yeah, it's constant value. So uh, same like the 
um, how to say? So it's same like similar to uh the the usual usual the things that we usually do uh, like uh. For example, in this case, for the type, we can use a string to represent a type. We can use an integer to represent a type. But because I already know how many states a type can have, so it's only two states. Either you deposit or you withdraw it. Right. So in this case, I just use an enum to define the state of the transaction. Right. So when you are deposit, you can find try to search for this keyword enum. Uh, to get more context of this uh, syntax, right? The first state is deposit state. And deposit state, I have to override the two string method because by default, when you want to read, uh, get the enum as a string, because enum is uh, just simply a, co a constant variable, if you want to get it as a string, it will straight away convert the deposit into the string deposit, yeah, when you call the two string method. Uh, by default. So I need to override that to make it return only D instead of the entire deposit. Same goes to withdrawal. Uh, I don't want it to return like uh, the entire entire string. So I just return A, W. So uh, what kind of methods we have before we come into the main method, right? So input. I have a static variable scanner. So scanner is here. Right. So the scanner, uh, the, the meaning of static is that it is, uh, there's only one instance for the entire class. So let's say my class is main. Right. So the entire class can access to this scanner. Want to redo this then print yeah whether you want to print the next line or not yeah if you want to print the next line then i append this uh, slash n else i will just simply print the text then pass input it scanner dot read line and you try to pass it into tokens okay i'm using the string tokenizer which uh, they will split the, the, the string into uh, some tokens okay we don't know how many tokens is it is it yeah you'll try to read from the string then separate by this this uh the, the uh actually this one i can just make it like this uh yeah i can separate by either space or separate by the uh vertical line. Okay, I don't know what, what symbol is it. Then uh, after I separate it, I try to create a transaction out of these tokens. Okay, tokens is just a string that's being extracted from the text. Okay, from the main text, let's say if the input is like this, yeah, D400, so on and so forth, right? So in this case, the token will be D400, W, three, uh, 300 until the end. So either you can use a uh, string tokenizer or you can use a dot split. Yeah, they are carrying the same effect actually. So this is a rejects, I think it's a rejects uh, input, uh, Neomaya. And try to play with the parameter at the second second parameter, okay? Then uh, create a transaction, then I set the type according to the input yeah because because the transaction type uh, I, i've mentioned that it is of the type of enum so enum will not be automatic um, automatically converted yeah so you need to convert yourself then after this uh, set a value then add the transaction into a transaction queue then you, i will return the entire transaction queue right so the uh, next method is pretty print Okay, this pretty print, it takes a list of transactions or a queue of transactions, and it tries to map every transaction element by its two string method. Uh, then I, after I get all the two string of the transactions, I will try to merge them back together by joining with the 
symbol of arrow sign. Uh, basically, this entire line is just for the sake of printing out the transactions properly or a queue properly uh, with arrows indicating the, uh, the transition between one element to another. Yeah. So this code, uh, you can search it online. Yeah. How to how to print a, a list? How how to return a list uh, of um, items to string? Okay. Then uh, I think I've already mentioned all the methods, right? So let's look at the main method. So this is the simple input. I'll copy it first. Then I will first of all uh, enter transactions. Then I will pass the input from users. Then, yeah, as I mentioned, that the pass input will return a list of transaction or a queue of transaction. Yeah. Then I will try to print. Okay, what are the transactions we have currently? Then I will create a new account. So account is another class, right? It's not mixed with uh any other classes. Then I set the balance to five hundred. Initial balance. Okay, is five hundred. Then for each transaction. Okay, this one. Either you can do like this, or because it is a queue, so uh, maybe you are not supposed to do this. Yeah, you better do do like wow, not transactions dot esmd. Right, so transactions dot pool. So this is the method that you can remove the first items in your list. Then you can do the same thing, uh, transaction, transaction. Uh, like this. Yeah. But uh, the, the difference between you are using the for each and you are using a while not empty is that when you are pulling out the transaction, it means the state of the, uh, the, the transaction itself will be removed and uh, totally from the your data. So once you have checked the transaction, if you don't need the data, then you can throw it away. But you, if you need to trace back, yeah, you might have problem tracing back because you already throw it away by using dot pool. Right, so in this case, I'm using a for each. Then uh, again, I'm checking the type first. If it is a deposit, okay, this is a switch for enum. So a good thing is that it is more readable. Okay, as you can see here, the deposit is uh, enum actually. I can just straight away use, okay, use it as a condition. If it's deposit, then I will add the value, set the success to true. If it is less than the value when you're doing a withdrawal, I will simply break the uh, the switch. So by default, the transaction success will be false, right? So I don't have to do anything to set it to false because by default it's false. Then only if uh, you, you are able to deduct the value, then yeah, your success will be true. So after I finish the switch, I finish processing the transaction, then I will check, okay, if it is success, then I will print the uh, amount of new balance with no rejected string. Else I will print a rejected string and also the old balance. Let's uh, try to run this main method. Try to see. Okay, so you can see here, and the transaction you can get. Uh, uh, no, this is your input. <laughs> then I'll print a list of transactions. Then first of all, your process. Uh, the first one, the new balance, are uh, like this. Then when 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 your new balance is smaller than your withdrawal amount, you reject, and then balance is still the same, right? So uh, after all, this bunch of codes are all only for display purpose. If you don't need to display like this, actually you can remove a bunch of codes. Mm. So yeah, that's it for first question. Okay. Simply read the input. Uh important and important skill set that you need to have is to be able to do some string manipulation. Yeah. Either you use dot split. Okay. Or you can use the uh string tokenizer. You need to find out a way that you can remember, right? Okay, you, you don't have to remember that, that you are more comfortable with, right? So that's it for first question. Now, uh, uh, second question. Second question. Uh, oh, 
Okay. Let's say second question is about reading from a text file, then categorize according uh, to the product category. So basically the text file is look like this. Okay. There are unknown amount of lines. There are unknown amount of products in one line. Yeah, maybe one line can have one product or it can have like 100. We're not sure about that. Then we need to get the input from the text file. And uh, print out all the product categories, then list them by their own code, right? For example, here P03, then all, all the P03 product will be here, then all the P02 will be here until the end. So also you have unknown amount of product categories. You can have six categories, you can like this, only have four categories. It's based on the user input. So one thing we can Assure now is that okay, we cannot just hard code it. We cannot just assume that there are four product categories and we create four queues. Yeah, that, that doesn't solve our problem. Our problem here is that the number of categories is variable, the number of products is variable. So we need to find a way to manage our data, right? Now again, we look at the what kind of um, classes we have, right? First, we have the product, definitely. Then product, we have code as well as name. So the code is the P0102, then the name is durian, rambutan, so on and so forth. Uh, and the two string method, yeah, nothing else. This product list is, uh, is your entire queues of products, okay? Now, the, the, the approach that I'm doing is that I have a linked list of categories, which is P0102, depending on the uh, user input. Then also I have a linked list of Q. Then the Q is a Q of product, right? So this list will contain like uh, multiple queues inside. So the reason I, why sometimes I choose a linked list, sometimes I choose a queue, is because, but not only the question one, because of the functionality I want from the variables, right? So as I mentioned that if you are using a queue, you have limited access to the methods already. For example, I'm not sure, but you can try. Yeah, just now I try is cannot. Uh. So the queue cannot get the index of the item. Okay, so let's say if you want to get, if you already have a queue of item category P03, then you try to get dot index off like this. But the result is that you will fail because you cannot call index of it doesn't exist in a queue data structure. Yeah, because they already hide the complexity of index of, so you cannot access it anymore. So the difference between linked list and queue is that uh, if you want more features, then you can use a linked list. Else only you consider about using a queue. Right? You cannot access the items in the middle already. Or you can only access the first item that's going to be removed. So this is a reason why I'm using a link list instead of queue. Here also the same. I need to check if the category already exists or not. I need to check all the items. So again, this time I need to use a link list instead. Right. Uh, it is not a must. For example, I can use a for each to get the queue, get the items in the queue and also do a checking. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But uh, personally, I feel like, yeah, this is shorter. So let's look at the main method here. Then, okay, before we go to a main, again, we have input, but this time input is a little bit different from the previous question. The input here, it will return a queue of string with a uh, tokenized text. Okay, so let's say I look, I open the text file. It looks like this, right? So, oh no. Okay, so now uh, every line I will call a tokenizer once and tokenize every single token and put it into the queue. So let's say if uh, 
this one I using uh, while it is still having some some text to be read. I will get the string tokenizer on top of the text I read. Then I will add all the tokens inside the queue and return the queue. So let's say if the 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 input is p zero three durian, it will be the first item is p zero three. The second item is durian. Yeah. So you put into a queue. Then it's P02 until the end, right? So this is for the input. Then after I get the input, here is a method to process the input. So now I have a product list and I have a text. So while not text is empty, this time because I understand that, okay, I will not need the input anymore after I process the input. So I will just throw it away using dot pool. I will pull the code out and pull the name out. So in this case, I didn't do any checking. So you might want to do a checking. You might not need to. Depends on the requirements stated. Create a product and try to add a product. Right. This is a method under the product list. Later, we can go, go more details about it. Then again, print and also pretty print. It's the same thing, just that this time I'm using a wildcard. So this arrow is a question mark as then object, right? So it means that any object can be the object that you store inside a queue. It can be a transaction, it can be product, it can be anything. It can be like a product list. As long as you have the toString method. And for your information, the Java class, even though the object class, it by default has the toString. So whatever class can go in, then you can print out with an arrow. Okay, that's it. Let's go to the main method. Get the input as a queue of string. Pretty print it. And uh, initialize the product list. Process your input into the product list. Then you print out the all the categories you have. After this, you print out all the uh, list of items you have inside every category. That's it. The main method is only in charge of printing out the stuff. The processing part is done by the product list. So this is like a factory, uh, not a factory. Yeah, it's like a processor that uh, every time a product coming in, you check if the product is inside the category or not. If it's not inside, okay. As you can see here, the method I'm using is uh by the index. Okay, so index of zero it means the the queue for the index of zero is ma matching with the code in the index of zero. The index of one will be matched with index of one. So if it does contain, I will just simply get the list and add at the end, add the product in the end. If it does not exist yet, I will have to initialize by adding the category, then add a empty queue, okay? Then add the product, they only return. Return, it means it will not go down here already, right? So uh, in Java, Q is a abstract class. It means you cannot simply create a variable of Q product equals to new Q. Yeah. It is a, a, a parent of linked list. So I'm not sure if it's a parent or it is a interface of linked list. Uh. Yeah, you can check about it. So I need to initialize a linked list then convert it, upcast it into a queue. Okay, that's it for this thing. Try to print it out and see the result. Yeah, should be the same, right? As you can see here. First of all, I'm getting the input, a tokenized input. Yeah, everything is separated. Then after I process it, I get four, only four codes. Each code, I will have corresponding queue. That's it for this question. If you have any problems, then uh, can feel free to raise. So that's it from me uh, for, the, for the two questions. Next, I'll pass to, to, uh, to the other demo. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I will 
present for question three. I'll share my screen now. Uh, okay, so for question three, you need to you need to create a program that simulate the two player color card game where each player will draw five cards from the deck in sequence and then compare the cards in sequence with each other. The card is uh you need to compare the number first, uh, and if the if the card have the same number, then you need to compare the color. So you will need to use this color card pass to store the to do, to store the detail of the. And then you use the different cues for different play players. Yeah, uh, so first of all, uh, my I have a class my queue like this. Uh, most of it I using the the Java library, the link this link this to implement my my queue. And then for to string, is same as last time. Uh, I will be uh, use it to print out the info. Okay, and then for color card. So, uh, first we will need. I implement the comparable interface here so that I can use. I will have the compare to compare to method to compare uh, between two color card, and then uh, the variable inside is will be the number and color only. Inside to string, uh, this is where I where I transform the because I am using uh integer integer type for number and color. So at to string, I I change it to the uh string so that it will become one two three four five six and then uh blue or green or red or yellow. And then for the for the compare to, I will compare the number first as in the question. And then if the number is same, then I will check if it is uh, okay. sorry, uh, because I'm using the because I'm using uh, for case one, the smaller number, it will be bigger. So uh, the one is blue, two is green, three is red and four is yellow. So I will check whether the number, uh, the color is smaller integer than the other or not. If it is smaller than it is, uh, it means that it's bigger card. Uh, so this is my main class. So I will create two two player queue for player one and player two, and then I will use card actually because uh inside the problem is that the you need to draw each player need to draw five cards from the deck in sequence and then compare the cards 
in sequence with each other. So, uh, so if you use the, so if you use random number to generate the card, it may have duplicate value. So you need to use a array to store the to store the value first, and then you shuffle it. Okay. The shuffle method, I just shuffle uh, between, I just change place for the, for and then after the shuffle, so the player will, will pick the, pick the card. So the okay. so for every so for every every uh element I'm actually using uh zero to thirty nine and then how how do I determine that it is a number okay? it is what number or what color for number I will use it to modulus by 10, the, the number inside the integer array is actually like the, if you have done it before the card deck, the rank and sweep, the rank will be modulus and Then I will enqueue. But uh, for here, need to note that uh, you need to plus one with this one. Uh, both of it is start from zero, but but from here uh, is the number and color is start from one. So you need to plus one so that uh, the the info one had any error. And then you print out the queue. And then start to dequeue and compare. So this count is the counter where I count how many times player one win. Then I Uh, five minus count. So, uh, because player one count plus player two count will be equal to five. And then, uh, if count is bigger than three, that means player one wins. Then I will print player one wins. And then, if less than three, so uh, player two have win more time. So it should print player two wins. Okay. Uh, let's run the program. So first one, a uh, play one will win. So the count will be plus one, and then second one, a uh, play one lose because number is smaller. Third one, a uh, play one still losing. For a uh, fifth one, the play one losing. So the Score is two versus three, player two win. Okay, let's run again. Okay, uh, okay, uh, so, uh, for this one, actually, you can. If you don't want to use integer array, actually you can use the color card array. 
it here it as well. So you can directly uh, print the print. Okay. So you can directly get the element without you need to convert it again. for the array. But you need to not... Uh, So if you use want to use it for for uh for this one the color card is it can be used in the generic, but for this one the because it's the smaller integer, not the integer class, so you will have problem. is after I change the code. So they are the array store the color card instead of the integer. So now uh, the, the queue will, can directly uh, enqueue the array element because it's color card type. So we can try, okay. So the result will be still the same. The uh the result result can be displayed properly. Okay, uh, it's all for question three. Any question? If not, I will pass to next demo. Question. Okay. Okay.
Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, now we continue for question four. Okay, question four. Okay, okay, we look at the question. Okay, you want to you want us to do a a program that calculate the buy or sell a sh a share of a common stock. Uh, using a uh, fee four, which is using a uh, Q to to calculate the uh, to cal to record and calculate uh, the transaction that we buy, we sell, and also the profit or loss when we sell a uh, a share. Okay, let's see the the program. Okay, basically we will have a a queue to hold every order that we have bought okay in here uh, you should use your own uh, queue class or you can use uh, linklist sing linklist have the all the method that uh, queue uh, have which is like uh, pick pull and add to the last uh, add to the last of a queue Okay, basically we have only two operations which one is buy and one is sell. So for buy, in this question we assume that uh, we can buy anytime. As long as we enter the enter the quantity and also the price and then we will buy. Okay, before we go to operation we, uh, we see the class uh, share order first which is we hold the order the the data of the order so basically we will uh, when we want to buy buy a share we will send an order uh, which consists of quantity and price and we'll record it inside our our stock so we know that uh for this certain quantity of a share how much uh price we uh use to how much cost we use to buy this quantity of of share. So basically, we are constructor to set the quantity and the price. So we have a getter, getter, the get method and the set method for the a get method of the price. Same price we don't need to set after we uh, initiate the object. So I didn't do the the setter the setter method for the price. And for quantity, we have a get method and the set method of the we get method and set method of a quantity uh, quantity where we get quantity and also we set a new quantity when we uh want to sell when we sell a quantity when we sell a certain quantity of share we will decrease the quantity of share by using the set method okay let's go back to the the share class where we hold the the stock queue okay so for the buy for the buy transaction we will just add the quantity that we buy and also the price to the stock queue so for this one based on the question we don't have, we don't have any limitation of checking the balance or what so we we'll just add it okay then another transition is for sell so when uh want to sell a particular share we need to ensure that we have inventory to execute the the transaction or else we will only execute the transaction whenever we are possible to execute so let's say you have total of 800 share but you enter you want to sell 1000 so you will only sell for 800 share and another 200 since you don't have enough balance so you won't execute you only execute for the 800 okay since we want to calculate also the profit or the loss 
uh, after we execute the cell uh, the cell trip so we will count the cost and also the cell for the for this transaction so we will check whether we still have uh stock if we still have inventory to to continue to sell or we already finish uh or we already finished the quantity that we want to sell if we still have if we still have stock so when you uh, call the method pick it will have something if you return now so that's mean the queue is already empty so you don't have any any amount of the share left if you have uh, uh if you still have holding uh, the share so you check whether you already fulfill the quantity yet that you want to sell if you didn't fulfill it you will uh, continue to sell until you meet the quantity that you want to sell okay inside the cell we have two condition when you get a when you pick a, a order that you buy that you bought before so you will check the quantity whether it is fulfill the quant the quantity that you need so for the first condition is it didn't it didn't it didn't fulfill so that's mean after you sell all the all the share from this uh from this order you still have quantity that you need to execute for the uh from your from your share left so in here you will you will pull the 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 share or the share order so this means you sell uh all the thing from from this share order so after you pull out you pull out you will be in, uh, removed from the from a queue and you calculate the cost that you that you bought for this share where you get the quantity and you times the price and then you also calculate for the sale how much how much money you will get for the sale and then you minus the your decrement for the doing the decrement operation for the quantity so that's mean you already uh, sell this this amount of quantity of share you still have uh, the balance that you need to execute for the next loop or else if you found that your your share order is totally fulfilled the quantity that you want to sell so that means you don't uh, pull the share order from the queue you will just remain remain the order inside the queue you will just decrease the quantity that you want to they want to they want to sell to the market so you will times the quantity with the price that you that you bought and also the quantity and the price currently you want to sell so you get a cost you get a cost and also the the sell um the sell amount that you will receive and then you pick again and then set the quantity so you you take the ori the original quantity and then minus the quantity that you have uh sold it up so you get a balance balance of the of a share and then you set you set the quanti the quantity to the new value and then this quantity will become zero since you already sell it all okay here i have another uh checking if statement where I check whether the quantity is greater or equal uh, greater than zero. So it's greater than zero is mean you didn't sell it or you still have some order you didn't execute due to you are lack of share to to sell. Since here you already uh sell it all when you pick from a queue, you will get you will get nothing. So you, you don't have any share uh on your hand 
and then you print it out the profit or loss that you get from this from this transaction so you just take the sell minus the cost so until now all uh all okay with uh this this workflow Okay, let's go to the main method to test for the to test for the the program that uh, we have done. Okay, first based on the question, we follow the construction that the the question have done. We buy one hundred share at twenty. We buy one hundred share and twenty, and then we buy twenty share twenty four, and then we buy twenty. 200 share at 36 and then we sell 150 at 30. So in this operation you will see uh the Q so the accumulate share they have uh, holding uh it will change according to this. So the first transaction when you buy for 100 so you will have 100 share uh in your hand and then you buy another 20 so the the share in is the quantity of share in increased to 120 and they will buy 200 it become 320 and then after you sell 150 so you still have 170 uh with your hand so this uh uh until this step right the third transition that we that we we bought so you have 320 of a share with uh all of them are different cost so some of that some of the quantity you bought and 20 some are at 24 and some are at 36 so when we execute the cell and we want to calculate the profit so we will execute by taking the first 100 plus the second one, the second transaction, the 20, and then plus the 30, which is the balance, until 150. So this is the amount that you will take, the share that you will take uh, to sell. So after this transaction, inside your queue, you will have 170 of a share at the cost of 36. So inside here, okay, let's see the main class is skewed. So after we have three bot transact, uh, transaction, so inside our stock queue, we will have total of 320, but they are diff have been different to three uh, different costs, different costs where 100 at 20, 20 is at 24 and 236. So after we execute, execute the sell, these two will be missing and we still have this one with a balance of 170. So we calculate the profit again with 940. You can try to check uh, by manually calculate uh, with, this, with this formula. We can try to put a different value to calculate whether it is a uh, valid it is a valid uh, formula or not okay since after this transition we still have 
180 of the balance. So now we try to sell 300 share at the price of 40. So this 300 share, since we already exist, uh, access, uh, access our balance with 180. So at the end, we will only sell 180 and we have 120 of balance. We didn't sell it. So, uh, yeah, we are still have 120. So you calculate the gain will be the quantity of share that you have sell, which is 180 times the different the price difference of the the price different which is 40 minus 36 which is 4 so you take 180 times 4 you should get uh 720 okay yeah this is for question 4 so later you'll see a question 6 uh, question 6 we are using you're using almost similar thing uh with your question 4 it's just the main method uh, is a different uh, how do you put you convert the, the string input inside the class but the calculation is all is 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 all same okay any question for question four Okay, if you don't have any question, I will pass a uh, question files uh, to Sia to continue to conduct a question. Okay, uh, so I will continue question five. Okay, so uh, for question five and actually question seven, if you notice, uh, both of them are same question. You need to create a program to simulate the processing of network packet. So the network packet will be processed uh, according to the priority and then accord also according to the type. The type will come first. So the voice packet will, come, uh, will be processed first and then it will become video. And then the, the last one to process is the data packet. And then uh, the packet also will be processed according to the priority. So here you need to create a packet class that consists of the type of packet and priority. But uh, based on the question, ID as well. So I have another variable, which is the ID of a packet. And then we, we create a priority queue class. So the priority queue class actually is same as the queue, but uh, just that the NQ and DQ method will be different. So that uh, for NQ, you, you may try to sort the the uh, element in the queue first. And for the queue, you always need to pop uh, or you need to remove the packet with the highest priority. Okay. Okay. So first of all, the, this is my packet class. I have three variables, the type, priority, and ID. Most of it will be same. Uh, and, and the detail of the packet. Uh, so I'm using the switch inside the compare to. So if first I will I always uh, depends on the this type first. So if uh, 
this packet type is voice, then I check the the another packet. What is the type of it? If it is voice, then I will check with uh whose priority is higher. If if this uh this packet have have higher priority, so it will return one. If uh, another packet have uh, lower priority, one. But by default, which is add for other case, uh, case video and case data, I will return one because uh, you do not need to compare the priority again. Uh, because voice will be processed first. And then for case video, I will check and uh, same. I will check another type, another packet type. If a uh, voice, you do not need to compare the priority. You need to, uh, you just return negative one. Indicate that is smaller than the than another packet. If it's same type, then you you check the priority and then. You return one or negative one according to who who we largest than who. And then lastly, the if the type is data, you do not need to compare, and then you can just return one. Then for data type, you just check when it, another type is also data. If it's not, then you can return it negative one because it will be processed last. By default, uh, I will return one because if I did not add this, it will throw error. Uh, because the you need to handle the default case with where the the type is not in this category. Okay. So for by priority queue, okay. Okay. first you can see that my type, the E, a uh, generic type, the E will be extending the comparable interface. So this For the comparison, I can I'm able to use the compare to a uh, method to compare. If not, if without this, you are not able to use the compare to because uh because the the generic type is not guaranteed to be the subclass of the or it had it did not maybe it did not implement the comparable interface. So I will uh, put the I will make it uh the generic type should need to be the implement comparable interface. Okay, and then so for NQ. Better first, QDQ, and then pick is empty, get size, and then to string. These are the common method for the Q class. Okay. So priority for priority Q, it will the difference will be the NQ and DQ. So for NQ, if it's empty, you can straight away add the element inside. Else, if it's not empty, you need to. So for the insertion, I'm using, uh, I'm checking for uh, every element. So let's say I have one, two, three. Sorry. So let's say I have three and two. 
if I need to insert, if I need to insert five, if I need to insert five, so first I will check whether is bigger than this one or not. If bigger than the current uh current head or not. If it is bigger, you can add it to the end. And then you remove this, the three, and then you add it to the back of the five. And then you remove two and add it to the back of the two. So that you uh for for now the five will be in front of a queue. Okay, so but for this But for this method, uh, you need one thing you need to be not that the the amount of time you need to look is the you need to get the size size first. So for so three and two, so is two element only. So you only need to look two times. So they are uh, when you look the so that when you uh look and pop an app at the element, the five will be in front regardless of what. If you if you put here the get size, so it will have problem because the when you after you insert successfully insert the element inside the inside the queue so after you insert the five you actually have three so the guest size will return you three so it will Because uh, it's the third time. So I'm using the old, the old size of the queue to prevent this, uh, this error. So I'm using the insert, this one, the Boolean variable to check whether I have insert it inside the queue or not. If I have not insert it that means it is it did not have higher uh, priority than any of the element inside the queue then you need to add the element inside if not then uh the queue will be will have you will, will not insert the element okay you keep adding and removing the So that you you can switch uh you can switch the place okay so actually for the queue I have two I have two way to do it the first way you just remove it if you if you already sort the sort the priority queue inside your end queue you do not need to try to get the highest priority because the first one is always the highest priority but if you did not sort it in the NQ so you will need uh, so you need to check whether, which one is the highest priority first Max or and here I put high high priority. The and then the index of it inside the queue. And then for every 
every single element I will look. So let's say it's one, two, three. So the first uh, one will be set as the high, highest priority element inside the queue. And then index zero will indicate is the position of the one. And then you will be removed and then you will be thrown to the back of the queue and then you compare the second one. If second one is higher, then uh, this one will be assigned as the highest priority and then index will be updated as well. Uh, you, this one, the index, not the size of a current because current the no matter how you is always at the first which is the index zero and then you after you compare this then you put to the back of the cube and then you compare the last last one and then so the third one is the highest and then you You do it again, the, you remove add or A. So actually until here, the, this for loop will be stopped and then you need to add another line, the Q.add, Q.remove. So that this tree can be successfully go to the back and then the, the Q is not modified. If not, uh, you will have problem. You and then uh okay, is same uh here is same as the NQ where you need to use the current size so that the so that the queue will look for correct uh, correct sequence so let's say if one three and two so current size will be three and then you need to look for two times So you need to look for two times. So the first time you each will be the three. But how uh so that you need to look look the queue until the three is in the first first element of the queue. So after the first First for loop, the one will be moved to the back and then three will be moved in front. And then if the I is equal to index, oh, sorry, then it will be removed. Oh, sorry, this one is wrong. So after you remove it, so only left two elements inside, and then you look for the second time, which is the So, uh, wait. Oh, this one is correct. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, if you look two time, the first time the one will be removed and put to the back, and then second time. 
the three will be removed and then two will be moved to the back of the queue. So uh, this one, this one should not be in the else condition because you need to remove it. Or if you want to put it in the else condition, and this one you need to put a uh, current size. It cannot be the. It cannot be less. So that the. The third time, these two will be moved to the back of the, the queue. But the Okay, uh, so if you're using this method, if the element is in the back of the, is in the last place of the element uh, of a queue, then you need to use the remove. Uh, you need to have a method. If not, I think that it should be okay. Uh, this one you put it in else. So if you uh, look three times, the first time you re uh, put the one to the back, and then second time you put two to the back, and then third time the three will be removed. It will not move to the back, it will be removed. And then the queue is uh, successfully removed the highest priority, highest priority element. And then you return the high, you straight return the high priority element because the high priority element will be the, the highest one. The, because you already record it. So for the main, I will have one, uh, I'll create a priority queue. And then uh, I will use vendor generator to generate the detail of packet. And then for everyone, uh, Every packet, I will dequeue it out from the queue. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so you can see that the the packet have arrived in no no order, but the packet will be processed in order. So the if process first, and then if is highest, you need to check which voice packet have highest priority. If it has higher priority, uh, then you need to be processed first. So three voice packet three will be processed first because it has a priority of two. And then for Voice packet four, five, eight, uh, all of them have priority one. So you just you just uh, process it according to their original place in the queue. So because four will be insert first, so four will be post processed first. And then the last voice packet to process to be processed is voice packet one, if it has a priority of zero. And then the second type of packet to process this video. And last is the data packet. Okay. So 
yeah, run, we run again, it's still same. There is it, something. Okay. This is the documentation for the priority queue. Actually for priority queue, it have one, one property. It has one property. So if you use, uh, you can see from here. So the iterator provider in method, iterator is not guaranteed to traverse the element of a priority queue in any. The priority queue when you enqueue any element inside the uh, into the queue, the priority queue, it did not sort it first, but it will remove the highest priority element from the DQ. So the uh, the checking will be done in the DQ, it's not in the enqueue. So when you try to uh, do some, let's say you use you use the iterator uh, method to return the iterator of the priority queue so that you, you want to, uh, maybe you want to do some, you want to check the element, all element inside the priority queue, it's not guaranteed to be in ascending or descending order. It's, uh, it's not even sought inside it. And then even uh, the two array, so when you get the, you try to change the priority queue to uh, change it to the array, it will not, uh, every time you, you may not get the same, same uh, array. The array uh, element may be in different order. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. That is it for question five. I'll pass to next demo. Any question? Okay, let's continue for question six. Okay, question six, when you uh, read the, the statement for the question, right? So it's quite, uh, can we say, similar to the question four, where you are doing a sequence of the transaction, and then you calculate the, the gain or loss from the sequence you execute by using a uh, first in first out uh, protocol. So can we say most of the thing will be similar with the question similar with the question four? Okay, so for question six, I copy the class share and also share order from question four. And I just tweet some of the thing where I didn't print out the, I didn't print out the transaction that have been made. Cause we will, we will execute transaction by uh, input the form the form of let's say buy how many share 
how many each finish share and how much each in this kind of format okay so in the main method i will use the i will use buffer reader to read the input and then after that i i initiate the new uh, share object Initiate the new share object and I start to read the input. Well, this either using uh and using do wow. So you will execute first and check the wow the condition is fulfilled. But in here I do the the first time for the read line before the before the while loop so i read the input and wow this is not empty so if empty i will just uh if empty is mean uh exit exit the program so then i will split i will split the line into into array of string so based on this format we have one two three four five we have six uh string inside our array where the index zero will indicate whether it is the buy or it is a sell transaction uh sell transaction and then the index number one will indicate the quantity of share that we want to sell or buy and then index number four will indicate the price that we want to execute the transaction the execute the buy or sell transaction so it's mean if the length is not equal to six so it's mean the output is not the input is not in, uh, in the format so we will uh, skip we will skip the all the operation that uh, the normal operation that will be run else we run the normal operation where we read the quantity from our input we read the price from our input and then we check whether it is one to buy or one to sell so it is is one to if one to buy so execute the buy the buy method which is here we add to the queue so we've been a uh, Add to our portfolio. Else, if we sell, we will execute the sell method, where the number of a share will be delete, will be removed from our portfolio from our queue, and they will calculate the profit or loss that have been made inside this uh trade, inside uh, uh from this sell transaction. So I will doing a demo with the input similar with question four. Okay, so we will follow the format to input quantity that we want to buy and how much we want to buy after finish transaction inside our our inventor inside our, our queue we have 100 inside uh, our inside our portfolio for better visualization maybe you can have another method that you can uh show how many quantity that uh exists inside the queue but i did uh, i didn't do it you can try to do it and to visualize see whether the quantity it is same as uh what you expect to have
半天 ，now you have three hundred and thirty share inside our portfolio. So inside here, inside here, we are again. So this amount is calculated from uh the first one hundred, which is you earn ten ringgit for each share. So total is one thousand, and then plus the thirty, where you earn thirty minus twenty four, you earn six dollar for each share. So six times thirty, you get. Hundred and eighty, so one one eight oh, and then twenty share is from here, where you lost six six dollar per share. So you minus one twenty, so you get one o six o. Inside here, I'm success to sell one hundred eighty share since I lack of three hundred and twenty, so I can't sell five hundred. Only able to sell one hundred eighty. So for each of them, I lost for I lost four rank four dollar per share. So I will get total gain for negative seven two or. Okay, I think this question is quite easy to uh to understand, right? So. If you have any question that uh you don't understand, you can either ask me or ask Jia Xiong, ask Xia. Then for question seven, since it's the same, question seven is same with question five. Okay, so we have done for this. Uh, lab six for the Q. So, Chia Xiong, anything you want to add on? Oh, okay. Since we still have time, so uh, let's let's say let's see um, wait. I'll talk a little bit about uh assignment. Okay. Uh, it's it's not a uh announcement or something like that. It's a discussion only. Yeah, I can share my screen. Okay, because uh, recently there are there are several students that uh come and ask me about the assignment, so I'm not sure about the third questions. I haven't looked at it yet, but basically for the assignments, right? Um, the important things of the uh when you are doing the assignment is that you need to understand or try to feel. Okay, what is the essence of this question? Okay, instead of thinking how to present it, you think. Uh, how to achieve it? Uh, using your data structure, the the things you learn from data structure. Okay, so uh, in short, it's not about what tools you use. It's not about uh, it's not mainly about I can say mainly about the uh user interface you are building. Uh, you are using a mobile app. You are you are building a web app, or you are using a cloud uh services like uh, Firebase or some. Uh, third-party authentication service, yeah, that kind of things uh, is not the priority, okay, because of this is assignment. So I expect to see the main course is still the, how say the main course is st still the data structure, okay. So, uh, it's not about uh, announcement, uh, okay. I don't have any announcement, right? So, for example, for example, if this is your the problem that you get. Is a the kangaroo problem, yeah. So I had looked through the kangaroo problem. It's quite interesting. Uh, the the there's issue actually, which I am not that understand. Yeah, I can I can point to you because uh, yesterday there's a student who come and ask me. 
about this can the stem of kangaroo that uh, if you can see here yeah jumping to point c then uh, eating nine food yeah this one actually i think it is a typo it's not nine it is something else you can try to uh, calculate yourself yeah but uh, aside from this typo another thing that this problem has is the taking this question maybe we can uh, study together then we uh, I try to explain to you what is the criteria needed uh, to relate it to your data structure it's not about how beautiful it is it's about how functional it is I believe that in your fundamental of programming uh, I'm not sure if you have this issue you are too focusing on the user interface until the requirement is not hit so the important thing is about the requirement okay so uh, ensure that your the data that you are managing is dynamic first, then only think of improvement in terms of UI, in terms of performance, or in terms of mm, even in terms of code quality. Okay. The first thing that comes to your mind is to achieve the requirement. Okay. Once you do that, you are able to achieve the basic requirements needed, then only you consider about uh, improving the quality, improving the uh, visualizations part okay uh, this kangaroo question if we go through this question okay basically this question is only about okay you have a map that have uh, many many points that is auto generated okay it is like a game actually so again we can use pen right so uh, let's say uh, that there's a map that have many points so every map you have three you have resources you have food i'm not sure what can grow is but it can be fruit or, or anything uh, or some grasses not sure <laughs> okay so you have several uh places where you have resources inside right and this thing is not plain it's a hill actually so every every point is a hill with which have some random generated height so you're a kangaroo then you need to ensure that this kangaroo uh, is able to get as much food as it needs and uh, is able to go from one point to another one area to another it requires energy to move from one place to another depending on the height of this area the height of the obstacles so you need to uh, do the conditional checking to check or if it is okay to jump over there and if it is worth it to jump over there let's say if this this place is already taken by other kangaroos or the resources is where is very less compared to the one you are holding then you found that oh it is no worth to waste this energy to go there already so uh, the decision making is the data structure part actually your uh the logic you're handling for the kangaroos so uh, you can go from one place to another but uh, I think the question got mentioned that there's only uh, one path between two uh, this one I'm not sure you can you can try to find out uh, between two points uh, maybe there's only one path there won't be like uh, it doesn't make sense to have like several paths here here and there because uh, it's based on obstacles it's not based on distance okay this is from what I understand. Uh, yeah, you just control this kangaroo. There are a bunch of kangaroos, male and can male kangaroo and female kangaroo. Then everyone is trying to jump from here and there to race for the resources. And until all the resources are taken out, or like all the kangaroos don't have enough energy, or they don't need to move anymore, then you terminate the program. Hmm. Basically, this is a requirement. So why why am I uh, mentioning about this requirement? Is because if we see here, okay. Uh, question set is not necessarily correct i can say uh, so uh if you see this uh, the problem statement for the kangaroo it mentioned that uh the first uh, the first unclear area is the female kangaroo okay it will not move around but maybe you can assume that the female kangaroo uh 
it, it cannot move, but it can eat something. Uh, it can uh, store the uh, food in pouch. There's no need for the female kangaroo to eat anything because uh, it doesn't need to move at all. So it will store every food in its pouch. But the problem is that when you are generating, when you are spawning the kangaroos, uh, where will be the female kangaroo before spawn? Maybe it can be at a selected point or the kangaroo can select itself like randomly uh, across the map or anything else. Okay, so now the unclear area is that or the area that leaves you to, to justify is that uh, the, the behavior of the, this female kangaroo, okay, because she cannot move. So how many food will she take? Is it like she, she spawned in this area, she will take all the food or until uh, she reach her limit? Yeah. I'm not sure, maybe below got mentioned, I only read about this, this paragraph. Yeah. So the behavior of female kangaroo, you need to justify either in your report or in your presentation. Yeah. So uh, the, the places which are a little bit unclear, you can make your own justification, but remember to write down every justification that you have. So when we, I'm not sure how it will go. Maybe it will be a video recording, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, when you are explaining your project, you need to justify. Okay, this is the first thing, uh, requirement you, you need to justify because there's no real user that are using your system. So you cannot get the requirement from the user. But re requirement elicitation is very, very important uh, techniques that you need to have. Either you can, uh, for things that are really, really huge impact, you can, uh, definitely you can ask us, like well, why, uh, how, how can I implement this? Okay. Okay, or you can ask doctor as well. Right, so this is the first thing. Then the next thing, okay, uh, kangaroo will have a pouch that had a limited amount of food. Okay, how much is limited? Okay, this one you also need to define yourself. What is your assumption? How much is a limited amount of food? Then another assumption is that, Okay, here. How what is the condition that define the kangaroo uh, whether it wants to jump from one place to another? Because there's not only two conditions actually. Even though now it's stating okay, uh, if you see there's more food or n, uh, it's using an n condition. But is this really n condition or is it all condition? Like uh, when there's more food or there's an equal food to me, uh, but there's more female there then. Yeah, the kangaroo will go there. Maybe. Or there's another situation, or maybe there's a colony there, then the kangaroo want to go to a colony. Yeah. This one I'm not sure what is the requirement about, but it is possible. Yeah. The behavior of kangaroo, if you don't clearly define before you caught, you will definitely hit some trouble when you want to justify the behavior, or even if you want to do testing, like oh, why why suddenly the kangaroo won't jump? Why suddenly it, it keeps jumping to the uh, location that is, has a bunch of rubbish there? Yeah. Uh, make your assumption. Uh. Mm. So the condition. Then uh, you, you need to clearly see the, the, the problem statement first before you even started. But now I think it's a, a, a little bit late. So <laughs> uh, revise, revise back. Uh and see if you, you achieve the requirements or not, right? So hmm. now another unclear things, this one is a little bit more serious. Okay, you see this, if you want to go to point another point, then the, yeah, the kangaroo is true that the kangaroo will eat the food. But after it eats the food, the problem says that, oh, you will still have three food remaining, but why? Like, even if you calculate here, I think it's a, the, the result will be a 12 foot, it is a 12 foot, right? Eight plus four, it, it remains three foot. Yes, it's true, but the problem is kangaroo wouldn't it take something into its pouch for storage, yeah. Usually when the kangaroo go, go to another place, it will eat the resource, yes. And it will store some, right? If it doesn't reach the limit yet. 
So it doesn't necessarily still have three foot. It might be uh, happening that the kangaroo air, when it goes to this place, then uh, it takes all the food because uh, it eats some, it takes the remaining. Yeah. So it is also possible. Then the point three will not left three foot. Mm. Make your justification. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, about this problem. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the major issue of this problem is about the problem statement. Uh, there are too many conditions already. Okay. Another way you can think when you're making the uh, project is that you try to think, put your feet under the kangaroo's shoes. Okay. You try to think uh, in, if you're a kangaroo, what is your decision? I'm sure that you want to make the best decision that you can store the most amount of food with least amount of energy wastage and with most amount of, uh, no, as a kangaroo, most amount of uh, mm, other kangaroos. Okay. Yeah, so that's from the kangaroo's perspective that uh, maybe you can try to follow that behavior. Hmm. Right, so this problem is pretty hard actually because uh, I don't see any. Hmm. How do you identify the output is correct? So you you cannot only show the final result, okay? So, uh, I didn't see output actually. Oh. Yeah, this one is. And you want later you see yourself because I didn't see it yet. I I'm afraid that I might talk about the wrong things. So here is. This is a classical like uh, competitive programming uh, question set with a sample input and straight away give you a sample output. You don't even know what things is happening down below. But this is not the things we want. We want to see the log. Yeah. So we want to see the process of how you how the data change from one to another. Yeah. Else we don't know whether you are doing a correct job or you are you are just uh generating random random numbers and put as an output, right? It's too difficult for us to calculate how you reach the sample output, how you reach the output. Okay, so uh, maybe from, from the sample input and sample output, you can get a different assumption or different conclusion than the assumption that I made just now. Yeah, just now is because I didn't see the sample input, I didn't see a sample output. I didn't see the rest of the things. I only see one paragraph, then I make assumption already. Yeah. So mm, come back to the previous problem. If you don't show the process how, then you need to show it. Uh, even uh, there's two approach that you can use when you are showing the process. One is just system to out of print line, then print it uh, beautifully with the numbering, step one, step two, step three, or with the timestamp, like uh, the first second, second second, the second, or which kangaroo do what thing why it does that thing, okay, why the kangaroo move from one to two, for example, uh, because of the food is more there, why the kangaroo can join the colony, because uh, the, there are still spaces for it, and it has enough food to join the colony, yeah. So the log, you need to log properly, this is the first way system out print line, or if you want a cleaner way, maybe you can uh, put it inside a text file using a append mode, which is uh, what I did for my concurrent uh, programming assignment. Uh. So I, I just simply uh, put every log inside a text file, then uh, it's clearer to refer back, or if, if I want to search any any keywords, then it's easier to search from the text file. Right, any problems? Right, so, this is for the first question. The, 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 the process is difficult to achieve. Okay. The second question, friend zone, okay. This question is, uh, the unclear thing is that, okay. This question actually, uh, it didn't mention anything about what, uh, okay, may, maybe because of the, the keyword app, 
app, yeah, keep using the app until everyone is thinking like, oh, I, I must do an Obama, Obama application. Then authentication, oh, I must use the authentication service from Facebook or from any social media platforms. Actually, it's not, okay. What this question wants, again, again, we think about from the data structure perspective, okay. If you have problems, then uh, later on you can you can email anyone, uh, okay, any one of us. So the the essence of data structure is the logic. It's not the tools that you're using. So for for this case, if you are taking this problem, it's not necessarily that you must uh, build uh, Android applications with Java. It is okay even if you want to use CLI. Yeah, this this uh, is mentioned here. You can use CLI. You can use mobile app, web app or even desktop application, you, if you want to use Swing or Java FX, feel free to use it. As long as, as, long as you can, you're familiar with it, you can kind of control whatever you're coding in that platform, then it is okay to do that. So it is actually, if you are using a CLI command prompt, it means that uh, you are simulating the entire process of this application. So you are simulating user A, user B, user C. You are simulating the communication between them. It doesn't necessarily be a real one. Yeah, you are making a fake one, right? Simulate the process. I can go through every every point. Then you can see uh, why why the requirements there. But the first thing, general authentication. Okay? You don't even need to link with any APIs. Okay. In fact, it's very very hard to link your account with other applications account. The main thing here is that you have several different classes. You have Tinder user, you have maybe Facebook user, you have Google user, all other fake classes, okay? The classes that you make up yourself. Then you have users from Toast platforms. That it means that you have object for Toast classes. Also fake one also, it's, it's okay to be fake, right? The, the core idea is the uh, the logic need to, needs to be real. Uh, the data can be fake, but the logic needs to be real, right? So you, uh, the, the reason of putting the requirement here is that it wants you to be able to convert object-oriented programming. You have to be able to do something to convert the classes from one class to another. Either you use the inheritance or you want to use a, a method to, to do the a factory method to convert the classes or you want to do an adapter, it is okay, right? As long as you are able to convert any classes to friend zone user, this is the requirement. Then the second one, find users near me. Why is it here? Because uh, it wants you to be able to manage the data set. It doesn't necessarily that you are using a real location data like latitude, longitude. If you feel like it is really difficult to compute uh, in that way or to even to get the information of the location data of a user it is fine for you to use x equals to zero y equals to zero then from there you go to the right side the x will plus one plus one plus one the y will plus down uh when going down will plus one plus one plus one uh the important thing is you you set yourself okay the data is like this then how to define 100 meters is it 100 times 100 uh, aerial, yeah, maybe it can be, right? The problem here is that it is a circle, right? Given, uh, okay, I might take a little bit more time. Uh, given this is the map, so these are the points you have, okay? These are points, uh, then when I want to find users near me, it means 100 meter near me, right? But I don't want a, a, a don't want a square. It has to be a circle. Then this requirement is to test how you manage the data that you can use the most efficient way to retrieve the nearest user within a circle, not a square. Yeah, you need to think of it. Right, circle, not a rectangle. Every requirement must have a reason behind it. Why the requirement is there? Find the same interest. Okay, same interest is similar to how you implement the comparable, right? You are comparing between the users nearby. Uh, who are the users that most match my interest? 
So you need to implement the comparable. So this requirement to test your knowledge in comparable through message feature. So this is about a uh, mapping of questions, which you can implement in your own way to do the mapping. Yeah. The text search can be difficult and can be easy. The easy way is just to exactly the text is here, then you convert to that. The harder way is to uh, find some algorithm, then it will show the similarity. If the similarity of text is more than 80%, then you convert it. Yeah. So this is about mapping. The fifth requirement, substitution and encryption. It's also about mapping, but this time it's about encryption and decryption. So it's a two-way uh, conversion instead of just one way from A to B. It goes from A to B and B to A. Similar thing, but uh, important for you to know. Then integrate all modules. Definitely you need to integrate together. If you have any problems, then email this one. Uh, other than this, okay, this question is pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, important thing is not the you. Why? Is the logic, okay? Now, oh, Corona, I haven't read this problem yet, sorry. Uh, that has the D. Uh, who are the users nearby? Who are the users? Uh, there's, there's most reason contact that particular question. And what is the risk based on your are not able to use some difficult data structure like I I until now I don't understand how to use tree. So I use link this first as long as I can solve the problems. Okay. Uh, you want to use RSA encryption, then you need to, okay, it defeats a little bit of the requirements already. Uh, how to say? Uh? Okay. It is okay to use your own encryption and decryption, because if you are using RSA, I assume that you, 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 you won't be coding yourself, right? So you won't be doing the math yourself. The thing is you are using an like external library. Mm. Okay, it can be accepted, uh, but it defeats the purpose. Okay, <laughs> the purpose of data structure. So maybe you can revise back. Uh, what is the purpose of the requirements? Okay, don't 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 overdo it, uh. Okay, just now I mentioned that for the requirements, you can you can you can justify yourself, right? But another thing is that the tools you use justify. This, this part, maybe you might miss it out in your report or uh, in your presentation, but actually it's quite important. Why you are choosing, for example, why you are choosing Firebase? It's better that you, you know both sides, okay? It's not always, there's no tools that's perfect. It's 100% fit this requirement. So you can justify in both sides uh, why you're using it and why is the trade-off that you can accept it. Yeah. Uh, all the tools are, uh, regardless is a DBMS or it is a, um, how to say, it's a UI or uh, even some library. If you are importing from a weird or uh, an unusual place, then uh, think of justifying it it will help us to understand more about you. Okay. Assignment is uh, for us to understand you. Yeah, <laughs> I can say like this. Uh. So we can evaluate based on our, our understanding towards your understanding. It will be easier for the entire process, right? Mm. Okay, so short answer is yes, you can use RSA. <laughs> No answer is you need to justify or maybe do some research on why is RSA. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is some external stuff. Uh. It, it it doesn't make sense that you uh okay, I give you another small example. Right. If 
then a Firebase Authentication Service. Why you are using it instead of using the uh, simple text file or binary file, they can probably do the same thing. Yeah. The first reason maybe is because you want to put it online. So uh, with the Firebase Authentication, you are able to put the things online, which is good because you can link between devices. Uh, but that's the surface area of justification. A more detailed area of justification might be, okay, so the Firebase authentication, it actually implements uh, a JWT uh, token-based authentication, which is secure. Okay, why is it secure? It's because, uh, blah, 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 you mentioned, <laughs> why is it secure? Uh, then uh, this is a more, more, inner layer of explanations and justifications. Yeah, not only about online, it's also about the security uh, aspect. It might be also about performance, why you are using MySQL instead of, let's uh, get uh, SQLite, okay, why you are using SQLite instead of text file to store your log. Uh, maybe you can mention that, oh, you, with this, like, uh, actually the query is faster than uh, the uh, you can do some spatial query without fetching all the data into your memory, right? But it also depends on your use. If if you found that the data the library you are importing is uh, it doesn't have any meaning or it doesn't have any useful meaning, so just don't import it. Okay. Importing external level in extra cost and dependency, which is not really good for a software. Yeah, so it, it doesn't mean that the more you show, the more, uh, the the better it is. So it's about the trade off. Okay, when you are using when you are onboarding some external stuff, it means that you are incurring dependency towards external service. How if you suddenly disconnected from your network, or how if uh the service suddenly down, yeah, that will incur a dependency that your system will break. So this is the things that you want to consider. Uh, it's not about not only about assignment. Uh, yeah, incurring dependency is usually not a good thing. You have a justification. To, uh, the trade off. Okay, <laughs> that's it. I want to say. Uh, so, uh, there are many things to think about, uh, especially when coding. You can just sit there think, think, think one day then uh, about the tools, about the logic, okay? And if, if you are using a, a UI and that UI is causing your code super messy, then I would suggest to use a CLI and be clear, keep it clean, short and precise. That, that uh, is another approach as well. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily it to be very fancy, yeah. If you are not fancy in the URL in a code base, right? Uh, if you have any problems, then uh, you can try to email. Uh, definitely, you can use the email here, but uh, only when provided the email and and the author uh, and the author of this assignment don't usually check this email. If you are not able to contact the email then uh, try to think, uh, e you can email uh, doctor as well, yeah, for, for more just uh, clarification about the requirements, right? So that's all from me regarding the uh, assignments, right? Mm -hmm. I'll pass back to doctor.